Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and we're on air. Before we even start, I want to give a shout out to the Ch Toronto General Transplant Ward. Uh, here, Alan Gates is a big fan, and we're going to just give him a call out because you know why? Because I feel like it. And uh, that's supposed about it. Um, basically, what's going on right at the present moment is I got the roof welded up. Um, I took the time and did that this morning. Uh, I seen, or maybe Jolene seen, there's a person that wanted to see the grinding process and I'm going to show the grinding process because I'm going to do uh, I'm going to fill that roof out in real time the full process from grinding it to fiberglassing it to filling it and uh, let's go let's let's do it let's get on with it um, basically what's going to go on is I'm going to grind it off first there's going to be a bit of noise and I apologize but turn your TV down if you like um, what I'm going to show you is how I grind them off and how I do it and I try to do it very quickly because um, grinding is not a fun job um, it's not a fun job at all but uh, there's a process to it and what I like to do is I only like to hit the weld I only, that's the only place I want to hit is the weld I don't want to do anything else other than the weld and I'm going to show you how I do it so if you want to turn your TV down I'm going to start that bad boy grinder up um, that's what's going to happen so we're going to try to fill this roof out right in front of your very eyes um, from grinding it to fiberglassing it to filling it. Start your clock. So basically I'm going to run this grinder over here. I like the eighth, I guess. There's not really a zip cut. It's an eighth, eighth wheel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it over top of it really quick, just hitting the weld. And it's going to sharpen this grinder disc up. That's what it's going to do. I forgot about that. Now that I have that ground down like that, come take a look, baby, if you can, sweetheart. I'll turn the grinder off. You can tell that I have not hit the roof. That's basically, I don't want to hit the roof. Also, you can see how this grinder wheel has got sharpened up because I laid it on this edge and I've taken it and it's kind of sharpened it. Now I'm going to turn it over and go this way and I'm going to get it closer to the metal than it was this way. And I'll tell you why it's working so good. It's because it's sharp.
Now I've cut a couple holes on top of here. I probably should weld them up. We'll rivet in there. I'm going to turn the welder on real quick and go for that. I got to go for that. Got to do it. Got to do it. All right, let's turn this on. Forgot about the rivets that held the held the luggage rack down. So we'll weld that up real quick, quick as we can. Sorry, we're busy. Sorry. I'm gonna coat hanger. I need air. I'll take this one. Come on. Alrighty, now I'm taking the air with me because I do not want to warp anything. It's up on the roof, remember. Uh, as you can see, it's not warped now, so I do not want to warp it as I weld this up. So I'm going to do what I have to do to not warp it. And I can tell you it's not warped because it's not, it's not oil can. It's really nice. It went well. So I'm going to just do this, take my hand off. Going to weld that up really quick. Forgot to get my, can you pass me that sweetheart? Apologize about that. Jolene looks amazing today. and She's a great help, that's for sure. Couldn't do it without her. We're like the chicken and the egg. Who comes first? <laughs> she does, but what is she, the chicken or the egg? Alrighty, I'm gonna just take this. Right up here, gonna do this as fast as possible. Got quite a size hole there. Right, I'm gonna just fill that up. Watch yourself, sweetheart. It was still red, and I didn't want to blow it away. When it's still red, you can you can blow the weld away. You can, and that's no good. You don't want to do that. I'm trying to fill the hole. Thought it was going to stay in the hole for me, but Jolene picked it up for me. Thank you, sweetheart. Just got a little bit more here. Give a tap down on that. Reason I'm going to give a tap down on that because I don't want to grind all the weld off and then have no meat. I'll just tap it down a little bit and then grind it off and I'll still have some meat. That makes sense. It would, it would have burnt me. So, just gonna take the grinder, knock it down a little bit. Gonna put it on its edge. Wound up a little bit. Here I am. Gonna go to the other side, knock it off a little bit. Over, knock it over here a little bit. Just want to 
knock this one down a little bit. Just want to knock it down. And the reason being I want to knock it down is when I, I don't want to grind it off flush to the metal because I won't have anything. I'll, I won't have no meat if I'm what I'm trying to say. You'll see a little pinhole. Take that out. That's good now. Let's go back to grind it off. From me welding that up to grinding that off, take notice that I didn't turn it black. I didn't turn anything black. There's nothing turned black here on the grinding part. And that just shows that I am not overheating anything. I'm not. When you see a bunch of weld that's been ground and you got a bunch of black marks in it, it means it's overheated. And uh, I don't want to overheat anything, I want to grind it off. You can still see the edge of the weld around there. It's down a little bit. The edge of this one's down a little bit. I can feel it. And that's good because now I can clean it up with the drill and go around and clean it up. And I know that I have meat in that hole. If I grind it off flush, like the side of the car, it becomes an issue. And what I mean by that, just too much material is gone. take a look sweetheart if you take a look across that I am just just barely touching the metal in a couple places and I know basically that's where I want to be now I'm going to switch up and go to the feather wheel or the flapper wheel I like a 40 grit on the flapper wheel and the reason I like that 40 grit is because it sands a little nicer if uh, you use the 80 it don't work as fast obviously but I like to use the 40 grit and what I like to do is I'm just going to sand down the weld I've got all these scratch marks going this way on that weld. You can see the scratch marks, which way they're going. Now I'm going to run the feather wheel this way and go against the scratches and sand it down so that the weld looks good. Want to keep that sand and wheel right on that weld if I can. Moving the flapper wheel quite quickly. Not heating anything up. Don't want to heat anything up.
Now, got that off. Got the drill here. I'm going to take the drill and just clean out the shadow of, of the weld. That's that black looking stuff on the edge of the weld. I call, I call it the shadow. So we're just going to do this now. Now I'm just going to take, knock this off, I'm going to use a flapper wheel and I'm just going to scuff up both sides of the weld where the ledge is. I'm just going to scuff it up because I want the filler to adhere the best it can um, with, I mean a zip cut, I'm going to take a zip cut, sorry, and I'm just going to scratch up gently on both sides of the weld to feather off the weld the best it can. I'm just going to do it quickly all the way across. Ah, I didn't plug it in. I got a, a, a bad place to stand in here right now, actually. It's kind of the seat, and it's slippery with dust. Ugh. Anyways, we're trying to get this done as quickly as possible, because we're on the clock! Alrighty, let's do this. Just rubbing over top of the weld, scratching it. Good. Good. Scratched up nice around the weld. Got that done. I'm going to need my DA. Just want to scratch the roof up really good. I'm going to get the DA. Thanks, sweetheart. Don't need no more gloves. I'm going to get inside and scratch the roof up really good. And I really re the reason I want it scratched up is because I want the filler to stick. I do not want anything coming off. Just like putting on Jolene's nails. Scratch it up real good. Hope for the best. Like I'm up a little bit in a few places. Not scared to hit the well because I got lots on it. It's not going anywhere.
If I ground it all off, I wouldn't be so happy. Gonna go with it? Gonna go with it. Ba, 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 ba. Blow it off. Might have to spread it out a little bit. Hmm. Knock it down a little bit more. That should tell you it's a good strong roof. Hitting it with a hammer. <laughs> Beautiful. You are Jolene. You're beautiful. All right. Let's get some fiberglass going. So basically what I'm saying with that, with, weld, with um, grinding a roof off or grinding any weld off, you should try to not um, blue the roof up or blue the weld up. If you're blue, making the weld blue, that means you're getting it hot. That's be the exact same thing as you were welding it and getting it hot. Um, where I welded these holes up when I was going back and forth, I just didn't want to bear the grinder on it and get it hot because I just took my time and tried not to get it hot. So I'm going to get some fiberglass going here. I'm going to run a skim from one side to the other just to cover it. Probably not even going to sand it. Just going to put it on there. And it's going to be very thin because basically that's all I think I need. I don't like looking up in them glasses. I feel old when I do that, when I do this. <laughs> I feel like I'm old. But that happens a lot. I'm getting there. I'm getting old. That's okay. I'm happy I made it this far. I'm going to mix this fairly thin. And the reason I'm going to mix it fairly thin is because I just want it to lay on there a nice thin coat of, of glass. Um, the filler, um, it doesn't need much. So basically, I don't want to put much on. But I do want to skim a filler or glass on it. I don't think it needs it, to be honest with you. But it's just a, a precaution that I always seem to take is glass it first. I don't think it needs it, to be honest with you. But we're going to do the full process. We're going to do the full process. I'm going to do a little more on it. Just make it a little bit thinner. That's preference. That's all that is, is preference. Alrighty. Lots of hardener. Gonna make it work, man. Gonna make it work. Trying to keep the squeegee in the material. Try to keep less pinholes as possible. Fiberglass you never usually prime over anyways because it's so porous. Should be able to put this on there just like glass. Reason being is I got it mixed out nice and thin. I'm gonna put it on and then smooth it out.
cover there. There we go. Throw the glass on it. Need this anywheres. We'll have to give it a second to to cure somewhat. Put lots of hardener in it. I'm gonna change squeegees when I put the filler on. I'm going to put the filler on just like doing drywall. If you see on the drywall with a, with a skim like that, right there where the two drywalls come together, generally, generally, you'll see when you walk in your house, you'll see where the, where the line of the drip rock is. You can see right here on the edge right there. You can see, generally, you can see where your drywall comes together. Now, if you take in watch someone that's done it a long time that don't want you to see anything in the drywall um, this basically was just put up because we had a leak but your drywall path pattern will be about that wide and that's basically what we're going to do on here We'd we would never try to fill that out with just that little spot here you'd want to fill it out from here to back here to get a wider a wider path to feather it out that's basically what's going on there with that roof low and when, like when the car comes down, when the roof is low, then you'll be able to t see what's going on. Uh, basically, I don't want anybody to know that I had to cut the roof in half twice and weld it back together twice. <laughs> I don't want them to know that. They wouldn't know that by just seeing the one roof. They think I cut it once, but I cut it twice. Um, so what I'm saying is the wider the path that we make down on the roof, the better job we will get to not be able to see it. If I just try to make it a little narrow thing, just to try to cover the weld, I just explained it. You'll see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump a little filler on here and we're gonna have to wait for that to dry. Put that on with lots of resin. And the reason being is I want it to, to lay out smooth. And you must admit, for how chunky that stuff is, how smooth that is. And we're just going to let it lay there for a little bit. If you want to get up there and show, but if you, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to buff that off. I don't want to buff that off. I want to leave it. That's for, for strength purposes. For strength purposes. Probably going to come out here a little bit further. Probably should have scratched through here a little bit further. Um, still wet. So I should probably should have scratched to about here somewhere. And we're only scratched to about here. I'm going to do it by hand. How's that? That'll just make it easier than throwing a bunch of dirt in that. That's all I want to do. Just going to do it by hand. And then I'll wipe it off. Give me something to do while I'm standing here watching it dry. Scratching it up. Makes everything stick good. Can I use your bench, sweetheart? We'll get some filler on that. That shouldn't scratch up on this side. Scratched up on this side, isn't it? Let's 
getting there. It's getting close. Oh, yeah. Mix up my filler and it'll be time. You can see, watch when I scrape my, put my fingers in through it, you can see that we're pretty well, pretty well dry. I mean, it's gonna stick good, that's for sure. It's not gonna pull up off. So we'll get this mixed up, let that cure a little bit longer, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm basically gonna run the filler from back here, probably to about up here somewhere. And that way there, we will never see what happened to the roof. Got a little filler on here today. Got a little filler around there. Got a little filler here, a little filler there. A little filler everywhere. A little filler on the roof. Got lots of hardener in it. It's supposed to be 3%. So if I split that in half, that'd be 50. Split it in half again, be 25. Split it in half again, be 12 and a half. It's supposed to be about 3%. Don't know if that's 3% or what that is, but that's what I put in it. Basically, all what I look for is the change of color. Once the color has changed and it's all one color, then it tells me I'm allowed to put it on. You can still see how it's a little bit coming through, the blue coming through there a little bit. I'd never want to put that on. I'd want to keep mixing it. So I'm always pulling it off the plate because so you can see if it's mixed or not. I want more than I need because if I don't have more than I need, I have to come back down here and mix more. I don't want to do that. What that takes is time and uh, to become as efficient as possible at this, um, generally I like to put on more than I need. I'm going to put it on the car and then I'm going to spread it out. We'll just put it on all the way. Get it on there and then we'll deal with it later. Hope I got enough. If not, you know what's going to happen. I have to mix more up. Just going to get it on there and then I can mess with it. Fiberglass be showing, be in trouble. Not really, but I don't want that. I want that. I want that. I want all of it. Any of it that go down in there. All right, see if I can get a swoop out of her. And generally, whatever way you pull it, 
is the way you're dragging it is where it's going. So I, I just drug it all the way across on this side. I'm going to drag it from this side again. I'm going to drag it again to this side. Hoping don't hurt on me. That. That's what we don't like. No drywaller likes that. And I have to get out of it because it's getting hard. Leaving it alone. There we go. So we'll wait for that to harden and then we'll buff it off and see what we got. down there but it's okay and I use anything for a mixing board I do not have no special mixing boards that I've had for 25 years I do not do that I just cut something up I got a piece of board in there I just cut it up whenever I get pieces on it chunks like that I just throw one away just like the paint guns I generally like to buy a new one every paint job. The reason being is, seems to seems to be reasonable, cheap to buy the guns, you know, for thirty nine ninety nine or whatever they cost. It looks like it might need or could use another coat out front, but um, I'm going to try that first and see if I can get it. If I can get it, I can get it. If I can't get it, that means I have to put another another thin coat on it all the way along the whole thing. Generally, the thicker, or the, well, let's say thicker, generally the wider path you have, um, generally it's harder to tell what's going on. And I always stress to the drywall because it's the exact same thing. I have a seam in the middle of that roof and the wider I make the path to get rid of it, the better off I think I will be. And we will see. I probably could have used a little bit more up in there maybe. But who knows? We'll see if we can get it. I'm going to get a brand new pad on the, the DA. I'm thinking I do, we'll need a new pad. And the reason being is I've been scuffing all that metal with it. So I'll get a new pad. Just leave that right there. Get a pad. Got one right here. Uh, and I take that off with the heat gun because I do not want to leave any sticky stuff on the pad. We're going to be painting a Fiero in the next little bit. Probably the next few days we'll be pulling it in. Um, You're going to do it as a favor for Jolene's stepfather. And we should have a good time doing it, basically. And if we don't, we won't do it, will we, baby? Huh? We'll just do it because we're having fun. That's what Jim told me to do. If you're not having fun, don't do it. Could be a good piece of hand paper, I suppose. I like to see that cure all the way. So as the clock is running, I have to wait for the for the for the fill to cure. So I want it to cure before I get weed whacking it. It's, it's probably got another another few minutes there before I can get on there and weed whack it. Our 
our seam is right about here somewhere. We might be back far enough. We might be a forward far enough. I'm not sure. We might be. Not sure. Just looking at it. Doesn't look bad. Could I paint it just like that, sweetheart? Rock guard it? Yeah, it's, it's, it feels good. Just kind of give it a little more time to harden. That's all. Just a little more time to harden. This bodywork process takes takes time, and uh, what can I say? Any any shortcuts that you can find, it's it's a good one. This this is a shortcut that I can tell you as this is on here right now. It would be so easy for me to get on here and start sanding it while it's soft if I wanted to use the block. If I wanted to use the block on it uh, and run across there easy, I could run that off fairly easy. Um, it, the only thing I'm scared of is, is it, it, it pulls off the metal sometimes. Where I like to use the DA, I don't have no, it doesn't matter to me if it's hard or rock hard or if it's soft or what it is. Uh, I will, I will take it off with that DA. But right now, at the present moment, you can see it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, and it's soft. I can show you, actually, I'll take it. I'll run a block on it, show you. And a lot of people do this. It's, no, well, do, do this if they're, you know, this is where I use this process, where it's soft, I generally use it on round areas. So if something's round, uh, and I can't get the DA on it, and I'm not trying to make it flat and straight, that's when I'll use it. Like, if I'm trying to round, when I round this off, I'll put it on, and then I'll take it off while it's, while it's sort of wet. And that's what it does. It fills up the paper. But right now, I'm just going to try to knock off the heads of it. Maybe it'll cure a little faster for me. I'm not going to sand this with the block. I'm going to do it with the DA. I'm just rubbing it down, taking some heads off it, maybe get it to cure a little faster. I'll leave that for a minute. Just going to set a couple more minutes. Take a little bit off. It'll probably uh, clog the paper up on this. It probably will. I'd like to have a brush to clean this off. You can have a wire brush, maybe to give it a scuff if it has to. Got a wire brush. Probably not the best wire brush to use for it, but if it fills the paper up, I want something to take the filler out. Still at the point where I where I think it will pull off the pull off the metal. It's still at that point. We got some filler back here. Let's go for it. Yeah, not too bad. Hitting glass already. That's how that's how close we are. We're hitting glass already.
Hitting ground floor, there's metal right there already. Metal right there already. Moving around quick because it's ripping it off quick and I don't want to... Feels nice and smooth. I'm holding it flat. I'm trying to feather this off. I got this as high. I'm trying to feather it off to get it down there. Once I get close, I'm going to take and use an 80 grip. An 80. So I got one. There's the ocean floor right there. There's the weld mark. Got a little low spot right there, and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Rub that off. I 
I got one spot that I'm touching ocean floor and I think it's okay because it's high. Now, anything high is generally okay. It's when it's low, it's when it's not okay. So, come up and take a look, if you can. So, I've got it all feathered off. Feathered off there, feathered off here, feathered off all the way along the front, feathered off, held it flat the whole time. I've got it going along here, hit ocean floor in the back, hit ocean floor over here, hit ocean floor in the well. You can see the well mark just peeking out a little bit, could take a little bit off it. I could take and sand that by hand for a second. You leave it past me. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm just gonna knock this edge off. Can't see what's going on down there. It'd be better if I was down there, but basically. Ocean floor over there. I'd say hit that with an 80 grit and I'd prime that. It is a little bit high right there, but what I'm thinking is that high is better than low and you would never see it. Uh, I basically say that's the roof in a nutshell. What time is it? 55. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back. Like, share, tell your friends, tell your mother, tell your brother, tell your brothers, tell your sisters, tell your fathers, tell your uncles, tell your cousins. Just like and subscribe. Um, we just filled the roof out in 55 minutes, and I'm very happy with it. I would prime it, and the reason being is where the metal is showing right there in the center, I'm saying that's high, and generally you do not see a high. Thanks, everybody.